For this demonstration, we're going to carry on from the last one where we wrote out a file called ApprovePO. And I still have that in my browser here. This is a, basically an ApprovePO message where we've added at the top the person who approved it, the date time they approved, the status, and then a reason for denying it if they decided to deny it. And then under that, we have the original purchase order. So when a purchase order is over $1,000, that file gets written to disk here in a file called Map Demo Out Needs Approval. And so my business scenario here is that some manager will be watching this directory, and when he sees a file here, he'll open it, and then he will fill in the details, and he will approve it. And uh, in a future video, we'll probably do that with InfoPath. Uh, in this first video, we'll just use it do it using the text editor, which of course you wouldn't let a real you know, business manager, business person edit raw XML. You'd put a nice little front end tool on top of this, which, which could be a C Sharp, a, a Windows GUI, or even a Silverlight, or one of the new Microsoft methods. So when we begin doing correlation, we are going to need a number that we can guarantee will be unique. And so looking at this file, um, the question is, what will be guaranteed to be unique? First of all, is my PO number unique? Well, in this case, I don't even have a PO number. But I'd say if this was a little more real-world example, I would have a purchase order number. So let's add that to my data file. So here, let's assume the purchase number is ABC123. Now, I guess there is a chance that two companies might submit the same purchase order. So we could also combine, to make it unique, the date time received and the purchase order number because the chances that within the same second two companies would submit the same purchase order, I'm going to consider that to be impossible or just so highly unusual. So you do have to have something unique. If, if you really want to be 100% unique, what you could do is you could stick a GUID in here. So um, like in this file, approval info, we could have put a, a GUID right here beside the denial reason. But for this purpose of this illustration, I'm going to use the purchase order number and the date received for my unique correlation. So what we need to do is set up a correlation, um, sometimes called a token. So I'm going to go back to my orchestration here. I'm trying to rearrange the screen where this will be more visual for you. I click on the orchestration and go to orchestration view. And there is something here called a correlation set. And then down in the type section, there's something called a correlation type. And again, think of the word type as a class and think of a correlation set as an object or an instance of that class. So before we can create a correlation set, we have to create the class or the type first. So we're going to come here to correlation types, right click, new correlation type. And then you can only correlate on fully promoted fields, not distinguished fields, but fully promoted fields. So first of all, I have to find the message. And here it is. It's the PO schema's property schema. And then when I expand that, I see the PO number and the PO date received. And I really don't need the amount, because that shouldn't uh, actually make it any more unique. So I think these two things will make my correlation unique. So I save that. And it automatically created something called correlation type 1. And I would probably rename this to correlation type approved PO, something like that. Okay. Then I can come back up here above the types and go to correlation sets. And now I create an instance. So I say new correlation set. And you pick the type from the list. So you can actually reference another orchestration if you want to, a referenced assembly. But normally, your correlation will be in your same orchestration. So I'm going to click it right here. Again, on the small window, it's hard to see the whole thing. And then I give this a name. Instead of calling it correlation 1, I'll call it core set approve PO. And description, you could type in if you wanted to. Actually, you have to hit the dot, dot, dot. A little window will pop up. And you can say, this is used to correlate um, the approve PO message when written to disk and received 
back by the same orchestration. Okay, so now when we send the, the PO out, there is a place on here on every send and receive called following correlation and initializing correlation sets. And so what you want to do is pick here when you send a message, that's usually the time you, you set the correlation or initialize the correlation. So when I send the message out to disk, at that time, I want it to remember or basically create a subscription so that when I have a receive later, that receive will tie back to the send and it will come back to the same orchestration, not another orchestration that's out there running. And let me also point out that what we're basically what we're going to do is add a receive here. And the time between this send and this receive could be five minutes, five hours, or five days. Because basically it depends on how fast the manager gets to this directory and how fast he approves it. So our orchestration is going to be what's, what they call long running. And the orchestration will usually dehydrate a minute or two after we send the message. And then it waits on the receive indefinitely. So if the manager never sends us the approval or the denial back, this orchestration will be dehydrated forever. Okay, so when we receive the message, what message are we going to receive? It's going to be the same approved PO message. And now we're going to set the correlation here as following, not initializing. So following correlation basically says This guy has to have the exact same correlation settings or values for PO number and PO date received as the as the time and as the settings were when I sent this message right here. So on the right side now we're going to need a new configured port, and we're going to call this port receive approve approve PO. Actually, I'm going to go back and copy that. I'm going to paste it here and put port type underscore. It's a one-way port. I will always be receiving and I will specify later. And then I want to hook these two together. So um, I'll put a group box here just to remind myself of what I just told you that um, there may, let's see, potential time lag here. So there's a time lag between the time we send it and the time we receive it. Another trick you can do here is that you can actually put group boxes inside of group boxes. So potential time lag here until manager approves PO. So that's a way you can have more than one line of text to help document your orchestration better, especially when you print it out. And so here we had send app PO. So here I want to put uh, the name receive app PO. Now to make this uh, orchestration a little more logical and more real world, what I'm going to do is add a, some logic down here, just maybe a dummy group box that says, uh, you know, add PO to our system. And that, who knows what our system might be. That might be SAP or Siebold or CRM system, whatever, some kind of enterprise level system. And so here you might call a web service, you might call a C Sharp, you might use an adapter, whatever. And so we're just going to kind of dummy it out for now and pretend. So what we'll do is let's just add a trace shape here. Let's copy one of our traces down and we'll just call it like a pretend shape here. So, so shape uh, 3000 and then here we'll say uh, 3000 pretend to call our system whatever our system might be okay now let's look at our logic up here again if if he says decide if needs approval or not so if it's under a thousand dollars it's automatically approved but what if uh, we write it to the file and then he denies it. So what we need to do is find out here if it's uh, approved or not. So we're going to insert another decide shape and then we're only going to add to our PO system if it's approved. So we need to create a rule here based on the approval status. 
So if it's under $1,000, we want to set it to approved automatically. So we're going to insert an expression shape here, and I want to set a variable called uh, V approved equals true. And you do put semicolons here at the end of all your statements, by the way. And now I need to create this variable in my variables. So I go over here to the orchestration viewer, find my variables, right click, add new variable, paste the identifier here, and I'll make this a Boolean. Okay. And for whatever reason, we'll initialize it to false instead of true. So in this case, we set it to true and we're okay. Now here, when the guy, uh, the manager approves it or not, um, what we could do here, well, I'm trying to think how to minimize the number of decide shapes. Uh, I could actually have the add to RPO system, call it here, and then call it here if it's true. But what I'm trying to think of is to have one common branch down at the bottom. So here when we call his the approval system we need to interrogate actually the value of the approval so if we go back to our schema we never actually promoted that field so let's go back to our approve PO schema and um, also notice let's, let's actually do a quick compare here if we look at the original schema, which was called standard purchase order, we had a couple of actually five fields that were either promoted or distinguished. And when you basically include a schema in another schema, the promotions are not automatically copied over. So for instance here, I might need to promote this field again. So I do quick promote again. And let's just double check one thing. Let's go back here. Again, we only have one property schema right now. And so there's the PO total amount, PO number. So let's take the PO number, promote that. Now, we need to know what was the approval status. So if you remember over here, we actually gave a restriction. And we put the word approved, denied, or escalated. Okay? So here, if approval status is approved, we need to test that in our program. So we need to make this either a promoted or distinguished field. And so there's a rule of thumb that says basically if you just need a field only in your orchestration, let's make it a distinguished field, not a promoted field. So I, I'm actually going to promote or distinguish all three of these fields, not as property fields, but as distinguished fields. Okay? And then I basically need to build this and then refresh my orchestration to make sure that I get these changes. So my build is happening right now on the schema project. It succeeded. I go back to my orchestration project right here and I'm going to drop and re-add the reference. Okay, it's dropped and now I click add reference. And once again I just reselect it here. Okay, now I go back to the orchestration, the ODX file, and what I need to do really is put another decide shape right here, and we will, we're going to interrogate the value that came back. So the message that we got back here is called message approved PO. So we're going to say message approved PO dot approval info. So remember when we're working with fully promoted fields, they show up here in parentheses. But if you're dealing with distinguished fields, it's more like the uh, normal C-sharp syntax with the dots. And so if the approval status equals two equal signs, approved. So you put two equals here just like you would in an if statement in a C-sharp program. And then I, I need to double check to make sure approved is the right keyword. So if I go back to this schema, go to this gray area, approved would be the value that says yes, I want to process this PO. Okay, so back to the orchestration. What I need to do here is actually we need to give a name to this. <coughs> Call it set approved. We're going to copy that down to this decide shape right here. 
So here we should put a little description on our rule, um, something like if manager approved, then we set the approved flag to m approved v approved equals true. Then down here we can just say if v approved. We don't have to put equal equal true because it's already a Boolean field. So if it's true, if approved, then we're going to add the PO to our system. And you know, of course, in the real world, you'd probably add the denied POs to your system too and keep track of them. But I'm trying to make you know something that would be slightly real world and slightly interesting, but also kind of try to illustrate how you how you could set up your business processes here to to control the flow of your data slightly different for different scenarios. Likewise here, where you have the word decide too, you might want to say check manager decision. If manager approved, do this, else do nothing. The other thing I'd probably do right here is I'd actually like to do a trace. So I'm going to find one of my trace statements. Actually, I'm going to find the trace I did at the top because this one, if you recall, I actually, that's not it either, sorry, right here. This one we actually use XML doc and we print out a whole XML message. So I'm going to copy that whole trace, 1000, and as soon as the message comes back to us, I want to dump that whole message to my trace file. So the way I number my trace is, is kind of sequentially. I'm in a branch here called 2000, and this is a branch called 2100. So if this is 2000, I might make this something like 2050. So in here I'd say trace 2050 received approved PO or approved PO and then here I'm going to reset the message to message approved PO. Okay. There's one other change I would suggest here to make this just a wee bit cleaner. I think it would actually work the way we have it, but here I have message approve. I actually want to copy that and paste it. And let's call this one message approve PO uh, in or something. Whereas this one could be message approve PO out. So when you rename a message, what it'll do is actually like this send port, see it automatically rename the message here for you. But on the receive, this is where I would now like to change it and call it message approve PO in. Now any code that you have inside your shapes like this, you will have to change that code. So here I need to say PO in. Okay. Now one other nice feature of BizTalk 2006 that we didn't have in 2004 is this zoom feature. So for instance I could zoom out to 30 percent and you could see the whole orchestration here very high level. Um, so you can see I receive, you can't really see the shapes, but if I just talk you through it, we receive a file, we have a scope here, we were just testing the scopes, we decide if it's over a thousand or under a thousand, and if it's over a thousand, we send the message off to the disk and we wait for the manager to put the message back into the system in a different folder. And then we test to see if it's approved. And if it's approved, we call our in-house purchase order system, whatever that might be. So of course I can zoom different levels. I typically leave zoom on 75% and this is what the 100% looks like. So I'm going to go back to 75. So we'll end this video now. In the next video, we will compile and test this orchestration.